Yeah, many people uh, see physics and physicists as something related to mathematics and people who compute a lot and, uh, you know, kind of blackboard guys. And this is correct, but it's only half of the story. There is the other half, uh, which is that physicists and physics in general must be able to tell a story. Uh, for instance, if you have okay, Newton's equation, so some equation that describes how the moon orbits around the Earth, you can compute all that, but it doesn't explain the ties. Uh, and uh, if I tell you a story like the moon attracts everything, including it attracts the water in the ocean, and because of that, you get these tides. That is a less predictive uh, story from the mathematics, but a, a story with much more uh, explanatory power. And so in quantum mechanics, we are very good at making a computation. We know Hilbert space, a state vector, self adjoint operators, I mean, all kinds of mathematical beasts. But that by themselves, by itself, doesn't tell a story. And so if we want really to understand quantum mechanics, we need to tell stories. And in books, we do that, we tell stories. But then at a certain point in the book, we have to be a bit uh, sketchy and uh, you know, put maybe the dust under the carpet, uh, because there is no complete and consistent uh, story that tells how, for instance, quantum correlations happen. So correlations is absolutely central in all science, whether it is geology, medicine, biology, physics, whatever. And in quantum mechanics, we also have correlations. Obviously, everywhere you have correlations. But in quantum mechanics, we have one very specific and bizarre kinds of correlations uh, that come that can happen between, let's say, two players. And we call them A and B or Alice and Bob because we like to tell stories. So we use Alice and Bob. And so Alice and Bob each get some quantum particle. And then we do measurements on them. And they get results, obviously. And then these results are correlated. And so when people noticed that, that was not a big deal. Uh, until actually Einstein first, and then John Bell a bit later, realized that these correlations are very, very bizarre. Because if you like to explain these correlations in the usual way, by just saying it comes from a common cause, as I just said before, that doesn't work. Because common cause leads technically to something we call a Bell inequality, and these correlations between Alice and Bob violate that Bell inequality. So it excludes a possible common cause. And you could also imagine that maybe Alice is doing the measurement first and she's influencing Bob. Or maybe Bob does first and influences Alice. But you can arrange the situation so that Alice and Bob are making the measurements at the same time. So there's no time to influence each other. So there's also no direct cause. And once you have a correlation that cannot be explained by common cause, nor by direct cause, we are stuck there, and then you say, okay, that's a quantum correlation, as we call it, a non-local quantum correlation, so we can put a word on it, but we cannot tell a story, and that's why I usually say that this kind of non-local quantum correlation seem to emerge somehow from outside space-time, because there is no story in space-time that tells how these correlations happen. In quantum mechanics, the results of a measurement are random. So whatever say, Alice does, she will get a random result. Bob will get a random result. But it's somehow the same random effect, or the same random event that happen on both sides. So we have to accept that there is intrinsic randomness and that these random events may manifest themselves at several locations. Yeah, so non-locality is indeed deeply uh, shocking. I mean, if, if, you, if you're not shocked, you didn't understand it. And uh, it's, it's the first reaction is that has to be wrong. I mean, there is probably a mistake in the argument, or the experiment was not well done, or there must be something tricky here or there. And I think there we have today plenty of uh, evidence, experimental evidence, uh, critical understanding of this and around, and how you can a bit relax this and that assumption. So I think today that is really some. Uh, it's a, it's a matter of fact, so whether you like or not, whether you are shocked by these non-local correlations, you have to accept them.